I know where there's some, right here in the hall closet. No, no, my God. I Hi, and welcome back. Today on the bench is an ICO, or ECO, uh, 369 uh, FM sweep generator. And we'll take a look at some of the capabilities of this thing, because I want to use one to align an FM radio. Let's listen in on myself. An A75... Oh, E is 3 to 7.5 megahertz, D is 6 to 16, C is 16 to 42, up to A, which is 75 to 220 megahertz. And that's this uh, vernier right here. And FM modulation around the outside. Which is just what I need. I don't care that it's modulated or not. Um, as long as it generates FM. And the FM comes out down here, old fashioned RF output. I'll change that to a B and C. An RF attenuator, one to a thousand. Uh, level, uh, was it zero to eight? It was zero to 10. And then these are the sweep generation and marker uh, controls here. With the sweep um, marker size, and I've got the knob coming. Uh, trace size from off to 10. This will be off for me because I don't do television. And the marker range marker off and then 2 to 6, 6 to 20, and 20 to 225. And here's the marker frequency itself in megacycles, 2 to 225. And again, since I don't do TV work, um, I won't be using that. There is a kind of a funky scope output right here. Looks like it has a ground ring and then one uh, pipe. We'll have to test this to see if one of these is actually the same as chassis ground or not. But the uh, the output uh, is available here. Demod in. Um, to be honest, I don't know what that means yet. Uh, crystal goes in here. One of the uh, CR8U variety, I think. So mostly I'm after the right side of this, um, just because I want to do some uh, FM work in the future. I am not very well set up to do FM right now. Um, so that's the front. Let's take a look at what's inside. Mag is very straightforward. Uh, old non-polarized line cord fuse holder with a good fuse, which is a good sign. And as far as I can tell, two screws. That's some trying to trimmer, I would guess. And two screws to take the back off.
All right. Yeah, it looks like it has a full tube complement. There's one under here. Power transformer. Um, everything is really pretty clean in here. There's some kind of oxidation in there or dirt. It's more like just dirt. Um, so this is the sweep marker section here with the tube in place. This is the primary oscillator section here. Oh, another tube hidden up under there. Um, oh. Tested July 17, 1972 by Echo Electronics. So the top looks complete and in pretty good shape. Nothing horrifying. Let's turn it over. Here's the underside. A filter cap, two microfarad, 150 volts. That looks like a I guess that's a more recent electrolytic. Here's another electrolytic here. It may or may not be original. Hard to tell. 50 microfarad, 150 volts. This is 10 at 150. But otherwise, pretty tidy. I don't see any nasty wires. Um, Probably manufactured in 1972, uh, so I wouldn't expect it to be all raggedy. I wouldn't even expect it to have been worked on. So what I'll do is, just to be on the safe side, and because I'm just not a chance taker, I will replace these three electrolytics. I will measure all the resistors I won't bother with the mica caps. They almost never fail. Um, I'll test the power transformer. Make sure its windings are in good shape. I'll test the tubes. That's another cap. It's a 2020 at 240. Um, or that might be too much, it's temperature range, yeah, can't tell. Anyway, 220 microfarad caps in there, I'll replace those. Um, it's nice and clean. There are a couple of components I don't recognize here. Right up in here, there are these two coils. Or appear to be coils. And they have these rubber These are rubber. They're mounted with those rubber things in there somehow. Oh, there's another coil. Is it rubber? No, it's um, carbon. It's carbon rods. This might be an oscillator. Might be the oscillators. I'll have to look at the schematic and see what's in there and what they are. Um, but this is a model 368. TV, FN, sweep generator, and marker generator. Um, the verniers are in good shape. A little gummy. Um, some kind of other trimmer there. I thought this might be a trimmer. Yeah, some kind of pot. 
don't know. Anyway, I'll run through the, the uh, fundamentals, make sure it's safe to power up, um, replace those parts that I know I would just want to replace anyway. And uh, we'll fire it up and see what happens. All right, here we are back. Um, what's been done? What has been done? Um, well, this number of caps and that number of carbon comp resistors have been replaced. Amazing number of resistors are out of tolerance in here. It's mostly 5% uh, or 10% rather. Um, so, you know, that's pretty good, but there were quite a ways out and I had to replace a bunch of them. Uh, so all the electrolytics, uh, the 220s that are in here, 20, uh, 20 microfarads, uh, 450 volts each, uh, have, this can has been replaced, I could tell that. Um, those might be good, but I don't have a decent capacitor tester to, to really find out, so I replaced them with a couple of, quote, 22s actually, 22s at 450. Um, what else? Just the scattering of resistors. There's a, a resistor bridge right here, which is on the schematic. Is this divider right here. And that's for changing, for attenuating the output, the RF output level um, by steps. And every one of these guys, they're 56 uh, on one, 50, 47, 56, 56, and then 470, 470, and 470, and every one of them is out of whack. I haven't received those yet, so, but I will replace those. They're all, they're all right up in here. Uh, this very large non-electrolytic, non, non-electrolytic, non-polarized cap right here, two microfarads, uh, has been replaced. Um, I don't know, just, just throughout the whole thing. And I've also on the front panel, I've cleaned the front panel up a bit. And um, replaced the missing knob and took the old connectors out and put uh, BNCs in. These are, these are isolated BNCs, so I had to, to ground them on the inside, uh, which is the way the, the original connectors were. Let me grab a couple of those. Yeah, it's these guys, uh, often used in old guitar amps and such, and, and some variety of instruments, obviously. So I replaced those with BNCs, much handier. Uh, what else? I've got all the tubes out except these guys. I'm going to power it up, bring it up on the Variac, and the uh, Tipton device very slowly without any tubes in it just to make sure the B plus is good and um, that the heater heater voltage is where it should be. Um, so I'll do that right now. I'll arrange a camera so you can see the Tipton device and the unit under test perhaps at the same time. Oh, by the way, all the orange marks on the schematic are replaced. The green one's tested okay. So it's about 60-40, I guess. 60 bad, 40 good percent. Uh, good. So let me move the camera. Okay, it's the usual setup. Um, going through a um, isolation transformer here, a variable transformer there, through the Tipton device, plugged into there. Uh, dim bulb is on. Uh, main power is off there, it's on there, uh, and the, the signal generator is now on. So let's see what happens. Recall that this display won't pick up until we're about 50, 60 volts AC incoming. Um, we'll see how this goes. And I have not done a uh, calculation on this to see what kind of amperage it should be drawing. Seems like it should be a couple hundred milliamps, maybe. So 
So at 52 volts, we're showing uh, 26 milliamps. And the bulb is not on. So that's good, I guess. Up to 75. Make sure we are on, yes. We are plugged in, yes. It's so funny, when you're working on a radio, you start to expect to hear crackling from the speaker about now. Of course, there will be no crackling out of this. If there is, it's a bad sign. <laughs> it's a bad sign. Um, so I'm happy there's no crackling. Okay. So we'll stop at 100 volts here and see what our power transformer is doing. Okay, we should be getting on pins 1 and 6 of the 6x4, which is the, um, the rectifier tube. Connect pin 1. And this, is, this will put us across the secondary. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 should be right here. And we're getting 496 volts, which is about what I would expect unloaded for the uh, the heaters. We can go across three and four of the same same uh, tube. Three and four. We should start to see some heater voltage 5.7. So it looks like we've got heater voltage and we've got secondary, or B plus. Let's run it up to 120. Okay, 6.9 volts for our um, heater voltage. We'll go back and check B plus. Uh, again, one and six. And we're right at, oop, what happened? Oh, right, okay. Uh, 595 volts. Again, no tubes in it, so it's unloaded. So that looks good. So now I'll populate the tubes and we'll try it for real, see what happens. Okay, the tubes are in. The drill is the same. I'll bring it up slowly on the variac. I've got the voltmeter now on pin 1 of the 6DR7 right here. This should tell us whether B-plus out of the, the 6X4 is working. And we'll see if we go from there. I don't know if you saw that or not. Anyway, uh, voltmeter is right here on this pin. And it's on DC, because that should be DC now. Make sure this is still on. It is. Turn that on. Zero volts. Bring it up. Okay. Tipped in devices on. 57, 58 volts. 165 milliamps. Not bad, not scary be okay. No B plus yet. Uh, it's starting to climb now. Um, at 70 volts, it's climbing to 2137, 55, 68, 86, 99, 100, 130, 147. around 200 volts DC at 70 volts. So we'll go up. Dumb bulb is not on. 
that's good. So I'll stop at about a hundred volts incoming. And we're at 263 milliamps, 286 volts D, uh, B plus. Go on up to 120. Three hundred and twenty milliamps. This will stop right there. Three hundred and thirty seven volts. Um, B plus. You check the voltage chart here. Uh, pin one of six DR seven should be three hundred and fifty volts. So it's a little low. Kind of surprising. Hmm. Okay. I'll have to look at that later. So it's not burning up. It's not melting down. The dim bulb is not lit. I'll switch to full power. Reduce the voltage. Should reduce the voltage before I switch to full power. Okay, and at 116 volts, full power. We've got 342 as opposed to the, the uh, listed 350, and that's close enough for this shop. All right. Uh, gee, the big question is, is it putting out any signal? Let me get rearranged so I can uh, tap into the RF out here, and we'll see. Okay, here's the setup. Um, oh, and the neon bulb is working. That's good. Um, I've got this set to uh, RF range of 3 to 7.5 megahertz right here. Uh, this is the frequency selector. Uh, those have to this, I'll, I'll do another video on calibrating this because these should be lined up differently than they are and there's a pr process to, to do that. But I've got um, the marker off, the sweep width to zero, uh, trace size is zero, um, so that none of this, this whole half right here has to do with television, and except for the sweep, actually just the marker and trace half to do with television. The sweep and the uh, RF level and the RF attenuator all of course have to do with, with uh, what we'll do for this FM radio. So, uh, then down here I've got a 0.05 microfarad cap. That's my scope probe. Um, and the scope is grounded to the shield of the uh, BNC connector. So what I will do is move the camera to the oscilloscope and we'll slowly turn this up and see if we get a signal. On the scope, get that out of the way. We're uh, on channel one mode, AC coupled, this is the input. Um, we've got, uh, what are we set at? I can't see it. One second, need more light. Not that. Uh, 0.2 on the time division, so we can look at it. This is only a 20 megahertz uh, oscilloscope, so it won't read as nearly as high as this signal generator should output. Uh, it'll get us in the ballpark in the, on the low end. And 20 millivolts per, per division vertically. So let's see what happens if we raise the RF level. Tracer is still on. Still drawing 326 milliamps. Oh, had the attenuator set too high. Ah, rats. And I unplugged the scope. All right. We have something of a sine wave. It's sure not great. 
I'll say that for it. Needs some tweaking, but it's there. Now if I uh, shift the frequency selector, it should be going higher and higher and higher and higher, and that is working. Okay, we have a badly shaped sine wave, but that should be fixable. Oops, there. Yeah, so I'm shifting the uh, band switch up now. We're in the 16 to 42 megahertz range. And that's just the upper limit of what this scope can look at. Can magnify. Yeah, so it's there. All right. Well, that's actually not a bad looking sine wave up there. It's not even terrible. Yeah, you can see now, you can see the defect that's in there. So with the lower frequencies, six, 16 down to three, got some deformities going on there, but as I said, that's that's uh, not unexpected given that I changed so many caps and given that this thing probably hasn't been calibrated since 1971. So we'll go through the calibration process in the next video and you can see what that's all about. I'll also talk about, everybody may not know what one of these guys does, and I'll talk about that a bit too and why it's useful when you're doing FM radios. But for right now, I can say with some certainty that I didn't kill it. It's uh, not dead. It's warped, but it's not dead. All right. All right, that's it for this one. See you next time. Take care.